The Mason's Tales. Freed our slaves. I think this one is called Freed Our Slaves, which is exactly the kind of saying words but meaning different things I expect from a Tevinter. There's lice in the carving too, but I'll come back to that. Subject aside, I like this. It's workmanlike, but in a good Dwarven way. It repeats because the carver knows what she's good at, so she does it again and again. Makes me think she has more than a passing knowledge of the stone. That said, there's two sets of hands involved. One old, one new. Take this Magister. He's glowing because he's fresh, newer. Same with his trophies flanking him, carved down from more complex figures. And that flat next to them seems plain, doesn't it? The bottom is filled with detail, but this is left an open field? No, that's just what it is now. But there's shadows for a clever eye. So what was here if not this handsome manager wanting his cod stuffed? Someone else instead of him and his friends, and two more figures on each side, seven total. Only the top was changed. The canary haven't been touched, that's old wear down there. When it was first done, and hundreds of years later, yoked canary prisoners still fit. I don't suppose it's for the same reasons. I can only say the what, not the why. I can guess that someone wanted to be a Tevinter hero and paid to have their face carved in an antiquity. I mean, that's a crime against ancestors where I'm from, but I don't expect Tevinters to obey dwarven honor. Or their own, really. They've been at war a long time, so I understand wanting to seem big. Orzammar's the same with the Darkspawn, unfortunately. Still, shame to lose the original. Not for the Seven, for the Carver. Good work, this. Invasion. This pretty collection is Invasion. Big claim for seven people in one castle. Maybe dreams aren't as grand as mages claim. Flying looks fun, though. Like falling, but up. So, not like falling at all. It's seven here, seven Magisters. Only five detail, but that's because two have been chipped away. Looks like vandals, done with a rock, not chisel. Hard to come up with a reason to do it poorly like that except fear or lack of time. Maybe they had symbols different from the ones left because symbols are always making people angry enough to chip rock. So these seven invade the Golden City. That's what it's meant to be because it's all fanciful. Need stairs if you ask me. Don't care if you can fly, stairs aren't just functional. They lead the eye and ground the structure. Here the sculptor hasn't just left them off. She's made the place too high. Anyone with a sense of the stone will tell you that this place is coming down under its own weight. It's intentional because it's a god's house, but I'm not sure what the style mishmash has to do with the wonder of that. If this were a real place from that long ago, you'd see only Tevinter in the architecture, but this looks like typical post-Empire bluster, adding elven bits like they always owned it. That's an artist for you. A mason would have at least got it the right way around. Tevinter foundation with elven overlay, not muddled. Anyway, simple message, the carver wants it known that mortals aren't supposed to be there. No stairs. Sacrifice. From what I can figure, this one is called Sacrifice. I'll get back to that later. By two sculptors, and I'll get back to that sooner. The sculptor's gone to the trouble of faces. I guess she worked from portraits, which means they were people who considered themselves important enough to need them. The scene is a classic example of don't do this because the sculptor hates them. It's in the way it's carved. All fast, hard edges, uglier than they need to be. Even for your average Tevinter who, and this isn't just me, mind, stands like a lanky vein of lyrium. But don't mistake that for sloppy carving. It's natural, practiced. The carver knows Tevinter, bet she is one, and it's self-hate probably. And obvious enough, their skulls all over, and too big and horned. That brings to mind your Canari, and fair enough, right? Tevinters hate Canari and have ever since they showed up. No magister wants his mouth contradicted, let alone stitched, so it makes sense that they're there, even that early, I suppose. Because this is probably that business of ridding to invade the Fade, and giants with horns are a good motivator to sodding hurry up. Odd thing, though, is that those two are not the only canary in the carving. The one in the middle was sculpted with horns, and someone has gone in later and chipped them off. You can tell by the surface of it. Well, maybe you can't, but I can. Seen it happen time and again. Tastes change and the ancestors' nudes are suddenly embarrassing. So in comes a new hand to paint on some clothes. And here, judging by the marks, to cut away the horns and make the victim look human. Some proud new owner didn't want to throw out the antiquity, but also didn't want people to think Grandma sliced up Canari. Looks like they didn't care if she kept their heads around, though. So, the carvers both wanted to show Tevinter being shits, but the later one didn't want to show what about. And that's usually to avoid blame or deny credit. Or to be an arse, I suppose. The Archdemon. I gather this one is tiled the Archdemon, not the three Archdemons, and I'll get back to that. Good construction here, a nice balanced carving if you consider Tevinters to have equal weight to the dragon's arse. Not a bad comparison, you ask me. 
seven magisters, and some easy symmetry to give a host something to sound smart about after dinner. If I had a guess, they'd go on about how four lines and four magisters are part of the dragon in favored. Two lines are piercing it so they do more damage than good, and one, that big one farthest out, has missed the thing completely. If this was carved around the third blight, that gets you three heads. Doesn't matter, those are shallow details, probably followed by, and it speaks to me because my soul something regret whatever. Now, the first thing those spits don't understand is that carving isn't just what you see. They never made a physical thing and don't know the how of it. Death is all tricks of shadow and such. The actual cuts are only as deep as the sculptor wants. And if you take a flat edge to this thing, what she wanted is strange. Because what I'm thinking is that this is the one archdemon and the three heads are the reaction to the three lines. Because piercing line one is on the same tier as the Tevinter second from left, and the middle head turned away. Piercing line two is the same tier as the Tevinter fifth from left, and the farthest head turned away. And the line that misses it, that's the same tier as the big Tevinter farthest out, and the dragon is looking straight at him. So the ones who did damage, the dragon doesn't care. The one who faked it, the dragon gives him an eyeful. Now, add to that, artists like to hit big targets, but this carving has no faces. If she wanted to carve specific people, they'd be there. She has that skill. So what if she's not after the Magister, she's carved to Vinter itself? You've got four ages of the Empire where they're part of the dragon, two where they damaged it, and one where they missed the point entirely and it gets them eaten. Think about it too much and I bet you could come up with five different ways to match their calendar, including your favorite aunt's birthday. So. There you go. That's how to go from balance to not invited next time. At my house, anyway. The Fall. Now here's a happy study. The Fall, and a face that says, Why did we try to go where there were no stairs? Because you go into impossible buildings like that, you're coming out on fire, and then it will flip or something. I still did not see the appeal of dreams. So, your seven magisters entered, and they came out blighted and not sure which way is up. I'll pass it off as a sculpture trying to represent madness. I mean, towers here, appended over there. You know what kind of force it would take to flip that much stone? It'd do more than burn your beard. Here's something interesting, though. You've got a hint of pigment in leaf causing some sheen, but there's meant to be more. All of these are painted and repainted at some point to match whatever lord's three-holer. But there's a type of finishing that you can do a very fine and time-consuming pass that evens the surface. Do it right, you can get stone as smooth as glass. And that tower and beardy skull are meant to have it, and only a little is present on the others. So the first time this carving was wheeled out, it would have looked like beardy was the target. So maybe he was first in the door. And the light? It burns him and spreads to the others. And the polish or leaf would have caught light like a mirror and caused the viewer to squint. They'd have to look down or away, joining the magisters in their punishment. Makes them feel part of it. That's what I figure anyway, and it would sure keep the children out of the feast hall. 